Good morning, everyone. I'm about to unbox a Pinebook Pro, and before I do that, I want to take a second to talk about why I think a Pinebook Pro is a neat thing to be looking at. So a Pinebook Pro is a 14-inch thin and light laptop from Pine64, and this laptop has a ARM processor in it, is intended to run Linux, and costs about 200 bucks. So getting a cheap laptop that works is great, running Linux is great, but why do we want an ARM processor? That's sort of the, the thing that's especially weird here. And that's weird even more so because the ARM processor that we're talking about is the sort of thing that would have been a high-end cell phone five or six years ago. So compared to any modern Intel compatible laptop, this thing is gonna be pretty slow. And beyond being pretty slow, this laptop has the maxed out amount of RAM that that ARM chipset supports, which is four gigabytes. And four gigabytes is marginal for desktop laptop style workflow nowadays. If we were trying to run Windows and do standard like Windows development stuff on it, that would be completely useless. Running Linux with sort of traditional Linux development tools and applications and even simple games, four gigs works. It's a little bit tight, but you can make it work. So then what are the advantages of this sort of machine, aside from the fact that it's cheap? So the first big advantage is that it is not an Intel device. And Intel devices are great, AMD Intel compatible devices are great, but there's some downsides to having everything be the same. And so just the simple fact that this is something that isn't Intel compatible and is a laptop is sufficient to want to take a look at it because it means that the market in uh, processors for laptops is a slightly more competitive market rather than just being Intel and AMD fighting each other. The other and potentially big adv bigger advantage here to it being different is the security benefit of not having a monoculture. You can ship like computer viruses that are compiled for Intel and expect them to be able to get everybody if everybody is running Intel processors. And sure, the fact that we're running Linux makes us less likely to be targeted by that sort of thing, but um, there are hardware security vulnerabilities, and by having different hardware, having a different processor, we can avoid some of those. You may remember the Spectre meltdown. Um, there were a couple other uh, of that class of actual hardware security vulnerabilities in Intel devices. And although the class of ARM processor in the Pinebook Pro has uh, some of the Spectre class vulnerabilities from um, from speculative execution, it doesn't have all the same ones as an Intel or AMD chip and not all in the same way. So having something else gives us a little bit more diversity in our, in our hardware, which is better for security. The other thing that's better for security is that these processors, especially as implemented in a laptop like the Pinebook Pro or similarly a laptop like the MNT Reform that I showed recently, um, is that they don't have known hardware backdoors that are turned on. On Intel uh, processors, the Intel processors have a thing called a management engine, which functions as a hardware backdoor that if it's set up, if it's not set up to be safe, then anyone in the same network can remotely access and control the device through the built-in network port. And exactly how significant that is on any given machine may vary, but the fact that Intel was willing to include that functionality in their motherboards, motherboard chipsets, and processors, and then hide it for five years means that we don't necessarily want to trust Intel to not have additional backdoor or other sort of um, intentional security vulnerabilities for the reason for that was for enterprise administration, but really we want to make sure that we know about all the hardware remote access functionality in our devices, and Intel has shown that they are not 100% trustworthy, so having other options is good. AMD is 
potentially a little bit better, but we know that they have similar functionality and we haven't gotten all the details. So that means that if we really want to try to avoid that class of vulnerability, Intel with the known vulnerability is actually a little bit safer than AMD with the unknown vulnerability. But moving to a custom board ARM system should largely avoid that class of problem entirely. So that's a neat benefit. The extent to which that is a serious security vulnerability for any particular person may vary, and probably it's not something that I should be worrying about as a concrete security problem, but it's still something that I would like to have devices that don't suffer from. Another advantage to these ARM devices is the possibility of better open source driver support. On the Pinebook Pro, concretely, it doesn't have drastically better open source driver support than a couple year old Intel laptop. There's a couple places where binary blobs that need to get loaded as firmware still exist. There's a couple places where either you're required to use a proprietary uh, driver executable, or you would be tempted to use a proprietary driver executable for slightly different feature sets, like with the graphics driver. Although the graphics driver has gotten much better and should be but the open source graphics driver for, uh, for the Pinebook Pro should be better than any proprietary alternative concretely pretty soon. But on a Intel or AMD device, there is no way to get a completely open source firmware free graphics driver. Whereas in the Pinebook Pro, we have this uh, Mali graphics chipset which uses an open source driver called Panfrost. And once that is up to date and integrated into Linux distros, we'll have completely uh, open source free software graphics drivers, which is awesome for all kinds of reasons. But uh, if you're wondering what sort of reason we would want open source graphics drivers for, a simple example is it'll be possible to run the computer with up to date software in five years. Um, we can see with uh, NVIDIA, who doesn't allow open source drivers at all for their hardware, that if you try to get a, I don't know, really easily, you go try to get a 10 year old NVIDIA card and then run an up to date Linux distribution on it, and you just can't. There are not uh, proprietary drivers for modern kernels because they don't support it anymore, and there aren't open source drivers. Well, 10 year old NVIDIA card, you might find open source drivers now, but. Um, Around five years ago, NVIDIA decided that they were just going to disallow open source drivers by having signed firmware that they don't re redistribute. And so that means that any NVIDIA card you get nowadays is something that you can use with a proprietary driver for a limited window of time, and then it's just trash. So open source drivers avoids that. Um, we will be able to run the graphics in the Pinebook Pro as long as like the hardware keeps working. There's no, no software issue there. Um, in the Pinebook Pro, the driver that I'm most sort of worried about is the Wi-Fi driver, but that may end up having open source support eventually. With other devices in this class, like the Pine Phone from Pine64, and even that MNT Reform um, laptop I showed off recently, you can get pretty close to 100% uh, open source drivers and no binary firmware which means you can audit the whole system and get a bunch of security or uh, customize and recompile the whole system for whatever reason you may have to want custom behavior, bug fixes, or improvements from your hardware. All right, so I said that was gonna be a really quick intro to why this is interesting to go with a fast unboxing. I've spent eight minutes, so let's go ahead and actually unbox this thing. Good morning, everyone. I got this package a while ago, and I'm finally getting a chance to take a look at it. So let's go ahead and open this up, and inside we should find a Pinebook Pro. That's a kind of neat ARM laptop from a company called Pine64. Okay, we have inside the DHL package a, another padded mailer, then See if I can open up the padded mailer. I'll put the knife down so I don't kill myself. Inside the padded mailer, we have a box, which appears to be upside down. I will pop open the thing in the box. 
And then inside the box we have a inside the box we have a box. Inside that box we have foam. We have a note here. Congratulations on your new Pinebook Pro. The Pinebook Pro has been created in conjunction with our community of developers and end users like ourselves. Go ahead and look at the wiki when you get confused. And it comes with Manjaro pre-installed. Those are all good things. So here is the computer itself in a thing. So what this thing is, is a laptop computer with a ARM processor in it. So Pine64 ships these relatively open source. They've been doing systems on a chip for a while, and they added the Pinebook, which was a smaller laptop computer with a lamer processor in it. And the neat thing about the Pinebook was that it cost 100 bucks. And then they extended that to this Pinebook Pro, which is a reasonable size laptop computer, which costs 200 bucks. All right, so here on the screen, we have a screen protector, plasticky thing that I will pull off. And that gives us a nice sort of not very glossy, I'd call this a matte display. Even though you can see me reflected in the screen, you don't like, I couldn't like do my makeup in it. And I think we also have a protector on this touchpad. I can't tell how to pick it up, so we'll see if it works with the protector on it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and see if this thing will boot. Little power lights on. Screen's not doing anything there. Right, well, I'm seeing if that, well, I'm seeing if that will boot. I'm gonna look through the packaging and see what else I can pull. There's a Manjaro uh, logo. Is your Pinebook Pro with ISO or ANSI layout? This one is an ANSI Pinebook Pro. Enter username. Nat. Enter additional groups for Nat in a comma separated list. That list seems fine. Enter full name. Nat. I can totally type, it just takes me a couple tries. Time zone is American New York. Locale is ENUS dot UTF-8. Is that secretly at the top? Did they do this the convenient way? No. There it is. Uh, desired host name for this system. This is one of those hard questions that I never know the answer to. Um, This machine is getting named Rabbit. That looks correct. Oh, apparently it auto-reboots. Okay, 
right, so there's the Manjaro bootloader again, and let's see if we get a default GUI. Did I just install this in Spanish? Did I like do ESUS? Well, no, I don't have a mouse yet. And we get this very simple, um, not sure what desktop this is. Oh, it's KDE. So it's not that simple, it's just a simple theme. Hmm, looks like I'm stuck in Spanish for a while, but that's okay. Let me go ahead and close this, uh, shut this down. And then, then we'll see whether there was anything else in the box or whether actually at a laptop with no power cable. Doesn't feel like it. So looking in the, looking in the box, I also found this thing. This contains the laptops. Uh, is that a British adapter, a European adapter? Let's get these posts, I bet this is British. Then we have a power wart with no connector on it. We have a British adapter and no connector. They give me a UK power adapter. Okay. Cool. That plug is not going to be super useful for my uh, purposes. I'll have to pick up another adapter or use the other one that I already happen to have. I'm done, there's the connector. So, apparently the problem is not anything about what got shipped to me. The problem is just that I am less than clever. Here's the power adapter. Here is setting it up for US. And then this is ready to plug in to charge the laptop. Size-wise, this is pretty standard for a 14-inch-ish laptop. Comparing it to some other laptops I have lying around, here is a um, ThinkPad X1 Yoga. So it's a little bit wider, a little bit a little bit uh, deeper, and the ThinkPad actually looks like it's slightly thicker than the Pinebook Pro. The other laptop comparison that I have here is the MNT Reform, which I looked at a week or two ago. And the MNT Reform is a little bit smaller. It's not a 14-inch uh, class laptop. It's a 13-inch class screen. But the, um, the Pinebook Pro is quite a bit thinner than the MNT Reform. And of course, that comes at the cost of not having the replaceable battery cells and other craziness. All right, so let's take a quick look at the outside of this thing. We have the top here is just black with not even any logos on it. On the back, we have a hinge with basically nothing on that too. On the side here, we have a USB-A, a headphone jack, and micro SD, which I know we can boot off of. Then on the other side, we have a um, power input, USB-A and USB-C. And I think this thing can take power in off USB-C, but I'm not 100% sure. On the bottom, we have some feet and some screws that let us get into it. This thing is a reasonably serviceable piece of gear as laptops go although not quite as serviceable as that MNT reform that I was looking at recently. And then on this particular one, 
On the inside here, we have a uh, ANSI standard keyboard layout with the sort of normal modifications that you expect to make it fit nicely in a laptop. They get control in the right place here on the outside. And aside from that, I don't see anything especially exciting about this layout. And then we have a touchpad with no hardware buttons. You have to click the touchpad, which is slightly annoying, but it works. There's one more point of comparison that I want to look at for this new Pinebook Pro that I got, and that is this laptop, which is also a Pinebook Pro. Now, the reason I got the new Pinebook Pro is because this Pinebook Pro I had is one of the first Pinebook Pros that they shipped. I had pre-ordered. And the advantage to the pre-ordered Pinebook Pro was that they were giving a uh, double-size eMMC storage device. So this Pinebook Pro on top, the old one, has a 128 gig uh, storage thing in it. The downside though is that this has a uh, ISO keyboard layout, so a Great Britain keyboard layout. You can see that there is a uh, pound symbol here on the key, which is definitely the British pound symbol. But more importantly, there's a couple of minor layout differences here, like the enter key is a little bit further away, the shift key is shorter, and so if you hit what would be the edge of the shift key on a uh, American ANSI keyboard layout, you're going to get backslash. And that was driving me nuts. I thought it wouldn't be a huge deal. I had an ISO keyboard when I was a little kid on one of the computers that we had. But these Pinebook Bros are reasonably inexpensive, so I decided I'd order another one and see if the ANSI keyboard layout was way less annoying than the ISO keyboard layout, and it is. So trade-off, this has a keyboard that I can type quite a bit better on, but only 64 gigs of storage, whereas this one has a keyboard that I keep messing up on, and it has 128 gigs of storage.